Hello friends, welcome back. So today when it comes to macOS, I'm happy to let you know that we have a new software update. And as you can see right there, this is macOS Sequoia 15.5 release candidate version. And for me on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, it comes in actually at exactly 15.62 gigs. It's a large file. And you can see some of the descriptions that Apple mentions when it comes to some of the changes that it has to offer. But on top of this, Apple also released least some other updates that you can see right here such as watchOS 11.5 RC, VisionOS 2.5 RC, tvOS 18.5 RC, macOS 15.5 RC2 and we have an older version of iPadOS 17.7.7 RC and iOS as well as iPadOS 15.5 RC. For all the versions of macOS we also got a release of macOS 14.7.6 RC4 and macOS 13.7 7.6 RC4. Most of those updates I do cover here on the channel at Halfman Tech. So if you want to keep up to date, definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out. Now what I'm going to quickly do is update my device and then we're going to look at some of the new features and changes that this new software update has to offer. Now that the latest Mac devices support something called Thunderbolt 5 and it's quickly becoming an industry standard. So in order not to slow down productivity, you need this. This is the Silklen Thunderbolt 5 cable and just by looking at it, you might think it's just another USB-C cable, but if you look closely, you can see that it has a 5 to depict Thunderbolt 5 support. And not only that, it's Intel certified delivering up to 8 gigabits per second bi-directional data transfer speeds and supporting up to 120 gigabits per second omnidirectional bandwidth. What this means is that using this cable, you can actually run dual 8k or 6k displays or maybe if you have a unique setup and you want to run triple 4k displays at 144 hertz you can do that using this silk lane thunderbolt 5 cable or maybe if you are trying to get the highest refresh rate from a 4k monitor this will be able to support 4k at 540 hertz this thunderbolt 5 cable also allows you to rapid recharge usb-c power hungry devices as it supports up to 240 watts power delivery and what this means that if you have a smartphone that supports 240 watts you can charge it from empty to about 88 percent in as little time as 30 minutes Compared to Thunderbolt 4, Thunderbolt 5 is actually much faster, meaning if you have like, for example, a 10 gigabit file and you want to transfer it, it can take as little time as one second to do that using this cable. So whether you are connecting to an external SSD or maybe charging a device or connecting an eGPU or perhaps a docking station, instead of having multiple different cables to handle different tasks, all you need is just one cable that has enough bandwidth to support all that. This cable is also braided to make it more durable. So if you're looking forward to elevating your experience and not slowing down your workflow, then check out the Silkland Thunderbolt 5 cable. It's tried and tested and is Intel approved. And I'll leave links to it in the description of this video where you can learn more and get yours today. Just like that, my device has now been updated to the latest version. You can see if we go to the storage tab here just to see how much Mac OS is taking. Mac OS is taking 22.58 gigs. It's about average. And if we go to see the new build number that we have, it's 24F74 and Apple Intelligence with this update is actually taking up 11.59 gigs. Previously, it was 11.58. So it's about average and there's no change in this aspect. Now, in terms of what's new or what's changed with this update, according to Apple, they mentioned that this update includes enhancements, bug fixes and security updates for your Mac. So they don't actually tell us much with this update, but some of the changes that carry over and the bug fixes that were covered in some of the other previous updates are here with this update you can see if it is up to date you're going to see the carried over check mark to tell you that your Mac is up to date and if you click on it you know you'll be able to see the build number right there which is good I think you have to click on the Mac OS version just like that so it's good to see that Apple has kept that in this update and since they mentioned enhancement and fixes one of the fixes that this update has has to do with screen time because now there's a fix 
that allows parents to receive notifications when the screen time passcode is used on a child's device so if you have a device for that you have set up for a child or someone that you want to you know basically monitor and limit with screen time you have the ability to do that and if that child or that person tries to input a passcode maybe attempting to guess the screen time passcode then you'll be able to get a notification as the parent so that's good that this has been fixed now you can actually just show mail categories right there and when you show it you can see if you go to the primary you can see the other subcategories such as transactions updates promotion but then if you look on this window right here you can actually see that there's a section right there that's there and that's all mail so now that protrudes the end of the screen just to show you that there's another tab right there that contains all mail that you can select in the mail categories there's a couple new games coming to mac os including other platforms as well such as apple tv you can see vision pro including the iphone and ipad as well and some of those five new games you can see right there if you know the game logo you can probably tell and those include basically uno arcade edition and you can see the other one right right there and you know if you want this is uh, also another one that has been added lego hill climb i like this game of hill climbing on the apple tv it's a pretty good one but now you can see there's a lego version of it and you can see helix jump right there and among others that have been added that you can play on your mac apple tv or iphone available on june 5. if you use browsers that have embedded vpns um my main browser that i use is safari and then the second one is chrome but there are some browsers that basically uh use vpns such as opera mini i believe is one of them among others so if your browser has an embedded vpn and you're experiencing connectivity issues when the vpn was enabled then there's a fix for this update that resolves that issue not to forget as well in the mail app if you go to the options right there you don't actually have to show categories for this to work so if you go in the mail app right there you can see you have the ability to hide and show contact photo without having to go into the top menu bar and change a couple settings so it's good to see that apple has added this which makes it more reachable and you know if you want to turn it off quickly you can actually just do that without having to go into the other sub menus mac os 15.5 also fixes an issue for the display calibrator where customizing display calibration using the pro display calibrator would actually cause the system to reboot on certain mac devices and the affected devices were the 14 inch and 16 inch macbook pro so if you're experiencing issues with that that has actually been fixed when it comes to external peripheral devices such as mice and keyboards and to be specific it seems like this was more prominent when it comes to external mice there is a fix for mice that had issues operating properly without using mouse glide so if you're experiencing that issue then you'll be happy to know that that has been resolved under the wallpaper tab right there we don't have any new wallpapers but if you're having issues with these other colors you can see you know they actually showing up good and the loading is actually pretty good and if we try and add like a custom color unlike before on the previous version where it wouldn't actually work properly you can see that that issue has been resolved in settings under the apple care and warranty information i'm still not happy by how long this actually takes it does make sense that it has to push certain information from the web but you can see right here this page has been slightly changed and you can see the font here has been made more bold as well as the text underneath you know that tells you to view status and so on and when you click on the specific device you can see its information and coverage right there which has been added and is good there were issues before where this would actually load up blank or just load a black screen and now that's no longer the case and the device information is actually showing up right there when it comes to safari the version that was there before was 206.21.2.4.11.2 but you can see that has been incremented at least for me and uh, it's just the last digit that went from a dot 2 to a dot 8 and the version is still safari 18.5 if you're experiencing issues with 
applications randomly closing or just quitting out of nowhere or having that system panic attack i'm happy to let you know that a, a couple of people have actually reached out to mention that this update resolves the majority of issues when it comes to application or the always panic attacks that it was having so it's good and it seems to be more stable for more users and there's also a fix for users when it comes to apple intelligence this one seems to be more specific for users in regions that recently attained or acquired apple intelligence abilities and uh, that issue would affect users when they would try and use an apple intelligent feature such as the new siri or some of the other abilities and you would see a screen that says that you need to download system resources or support resources first and then apple intelligence would be enabled so that has been fixed and if you have shared network locations within finder that you see right there there's actually a fix that resolves an issue that would actually cause large amounts of files not to show up and also large amounts of data would be incorrectly enumerated which has been resolved with this update so it's good to see that that's now a thing of the past and also it seems like there's a new splash screen according to different users when it comes to the developer application the moment you open it up for the first time for me i think i might have actually already got it in the past and then i just click continue and went next so that's why i don't see this if all goes well this build number that we have today with mac os 15.5 RC supposed to be the official release coming out pretty soon as soon as Monday you know there's also going to be uh, Apple security releases that are going to be released alongside this such as you know what we got with Mac OS 15.4.1 or maybe if you are on Mac OS 15.4 you know we got a couple of security patches that you see right there and there was a lot so um, when this update comes out officially this is a good page to always monitor and see if there are any security releases that have been mentioned now in terms of when this update could be coming out officially it's highly likely that it will come out next week monday which is going to be may 12 so this is a really good candidate date for the official release and of course since we are expecting mac os 15.6 that has apple has actually confirmed to be testing we might get it the day after on the 13th or maybe on the 14th and if apple doesn't release it during those two days then mac os 15.6 might come out on may 19 but also not to forget that wwdc is on june 9th where we are expecting mac os 16 and i'll be covering it here on the channel so if you want to keep updated and know what's new when it comes out definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out my name is ben and i'm signing off